Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Superpower User. My name is Stanley and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to use glass tubing in your water cooling build. Ever since 2012, 2013, I've been using hard acrylic tubing for all my water cool builds. Back then, acrylic tubing was pretty much the only option that you could use. Then a few years later, we got PETG as an alternative to acrylic. PETG, of course, is a little bit softer, a little bit easier to, uh, to deal with than acrylic tubing. Acrylic tubing is a little bit brittle and likes to shatter. But then a few years later, about almost three years back now, we started getting glass tubing as an alternative. And this right here is a 12 millimeter glass tube from Mayhem's. Uh, Mayhem's borosilicate glass tubing uh, works really well with 12 millimeter bits power fittings, which is the ones that I've got in the build. Originally, I was using 12 millimeter acrylic tubing with those fittings. Now I'm swatching over to glass tubing and you can see here the difference in clarity is extreme. Now, of course, this acrylic tube is about five years old now. It's been in the system for a long time, but still you can see the scratches from just wear and tear and you can see it's very cloudy. Well, of course, glass is exactly what you would expect. 100% clear and scratchless and whatever. So there's a lot of benefits to going to with glass tubing. Now, of course, one of the major downsides is that you can't bend glass tubing very easily. Now, you still can bend it uh, if you get a blowtorch out and you, you, know, you, you get it soft and it will bend, but then because it's very difficult to prop it up, you might get a little kink in it. Now, maybe one of these days I'll make a video of how to actually bend glass tubing, but in this video, because all of my runs are straight, I'm going to focus on how to measure, cut, and use glass tubing. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is to uh, chamfer one of the edges. And I've got this right here. And uh, I've got one edge that is, well, no, I got two edges that are rough. And I need to pick one of the edges to make it smooth. I'm gonna bring you a little closer so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and uh, we can get to the grinding. All right, you can see here, one of the edges here is, or both of the edges are actually pretty sharp. Uh, and this is because this, I've cut and broken off the edges already for another piece and this is the leftover. So this, I can either grind this edge or I can grind this edge and to me, This one is the better one to go with because it's a little bit more square than this one. This one's a little bit at an angle. So what I'll do is start grinding on this edge. Now, this is just regular sandpaper, 3M sandpaper. This is 120 grit. I find that the, if you use a very thick or a harsh, hard grit, maybe 100, 120, you can grind it down to the point where it's flat and, uh, or you can take out those angles and take out the highs and lows, and then you can finish it off with 400 grit sandpaper to make sure that you polish the edges. So this is just to make it, um, you know, to bring down, bring it down so that it's square. Um, and all you do is just move in circles. And this is pretty much exactly what you do with acrylic tubing or PETG tubing. You know, you just, you take it and then you just go in circles. And just like that, you got a really rough cut or rough polish that you can work with further. Uh, what I've done was basically get all of the highs and lows on the edges down into a consistent, um, consistent level and then now I can work on the edge so uh, the same with regular you know plastic tubing just roll and just slowly roll the tube while you work on the edge and then I got some water to, to wash off the glass bits 
And just like that, I've got a chamfered edge and an end that won't cut O-ring. This is smooth enough that it won't cut you or it cut an O-ring, but certainly it's not uh, polished, completely polished. So if you wanna take it one step further, what you could do is use a finer grit, a 400 grit sandpaper, and just polish it off a little bit more. Just make sure you get the edges so that uh, it gets a little bit smoother. And just like that, this is smooth enough where you can pretty much lick it and still be fine. Now, this is the desired length that I want, and you can see how scratched up and dirty the acrylic is compared to compared to the glass. So uh, what I can do here now is measure the length and then make a permanent marker mark on it so that I know how much I need to cut. The reason why I recommend to use a PETG or acrylic to mock up your loop is so that you know exactly how long of a piece you need. Um, that way you can get the exact cut you want. Now there are many tools to use to cut glass. This is the one that I have right here. The way this work tool works is that you lock in uh, the chain here, you put your glass in, and then you slowly tighten to get that clamp on that glass. And then you have to find your little mark. And once you find your mark and you line up, line up the blades to the mark, you give it a little squeeze, and then just give it a quarter turn. And really, that's enough. From here, you can see that I've got a nice score mark right around. You see that mark right there? It's, that score mark is basically right on that mark. From here, you just give it a little pull and a bend all in one motion, and it'll snap in two. Now, that was pretty easy of a snap to, do, to make. So what I end up with is this right here. Now, if you measure the actual cut, uh, the piece that you want, you'll see that it ends up pretty close to what you want. From here, you just need to take the edge of the newly cut side and then do the exact same thing we just did before to wear down, wear down this edge. Now, uh, unfortunately, we have a uneven break, a little bit of an uneven break. So what we'll have to do is to grind it down a little bit more. What did we learn? Well, even if you have a bad cut, you're able to and it's not completely square. With a little bit of uh, sandpaper, you can get that to be square, and it's a still a completely usable piece. From here, just wash off the glass uh, dust. What you have here is a completely perfect piece for you to use. Put the O-ring on, put the collar in, and then put the other O-ring on and the other collar, and here you go. Once you got these colors on here, uh, you just give it a little push and make sure you go in straight because um, because glass will shatter. If you come in at an angle, if at a bad angle, you put the metal comes into contact with the glass, you put a little extra stress and you know torque it a little bit, this glass will shatter right around here. And I've had that happen already. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate because you put in all this work and it shatters and it's no good. So you just basically need to be a little bit gentle and give a little twist, make sure it's all the way in, and then you can lock down the collar. Uh, as you can see, the cutting and bending, or cutting and, um, you know, and smoothing it out or and getting that edge that you want on glass really isn't that much difficult, more difficult than, than acrylic. In fact, I wanna say the way the sandpaper, because we're using a rough grit sandpaper and to work at the glass, it actually, because it's so much more brittle, it's actually kind of easier to remove material off of the glass. And because it's such a hard, much harder material and a thicker material, 
there's really no need to go much past 400 grit. You know, you can you can wet sand it, and and wet sanding is just to eliminate the dust and make sure that you don't have the dust. But uh, to go up to 1,000 or 1,500 grit sandpaper is really probably not necessary because, as you can see here, it's it's safe enough for the O-ring already. Now, two things to be aware of. One is that you really should be using gloves because just in case this shatters on you, you don't want to get the glass shards in your hand. Uh, what I've got here is a very thick uh, nitrile glove, really good for automotive, you know, use or whatever. It's a it's a tight glove and it's a, and it's a really thick glove so that it won't rip that easily. Second point is that you really don't want to be breathing in this glass dust. You really actually should be using a respirator or, or one of those 3M masks so that you can make sure that you don't breathe this in because this, this dust is no good for your lungs. But though, besides those two precautions, uh, and also you really should be using some kind of uh, goggles or glasses to make sure that the glass shards don't fly into your eyes. But other than those three precautions, cutting glass and polishing glass is not that hard. All right, from here, I've got this part right here. I put this on. I put this one on just a moment ago, and see, I've got the O-ring on, the collar on, and all you need to do is to give it a little push, give it a little twist, and it goes right in. Don't push too hard or don't twi tw uh, twist it too much, otherwise you always run that risk of breaking, shattering the glass, but that's it. So as you can see, that piece of glass is in, it's ready to go, and it, that was relatively simple. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And perhaps consider subscribing to see the rest of this build. I'll see you in the next one.